Every time that truck cranks up, I want to make as much money as I can and stay as local as I can. Am I good at either of them? It's time to find out. Let's get after it. All right, just got checked in here at Sand 5. It is nine o'clock on Sunday night. This was supposed to be my first load. Uh, let me bring you up to speed on what my days looked like. I uh, kind of got up this morning, started messing around with the load board a little bit, looking at it. And uh, they had on there tonight, they had uh, two of these loads that were kind of like, I've seen them go for more, but I was I was content with both of them. One's a little uh, $7 a mile down to National City. Uh, that's where I'm heading first. That's the load I just checked in now. That one's supposed to start at 9.30. And then uh, they had a, they had another one going to a third party site. I believe I'm like picking up a preloaded trailer at Sand 3, going to a third party site that's like four miles down the street and then bringing the empty trailer back to like a Sand 3, Sand 5, something like that. That one was like $24, $25 a mile. Uh, both of them were, it put me like just over $400. And I always talk about like, you know, having an anchor for the night, having having a reason for me to crank up the truck. Those two loads kind of gave, uh, gave me a reason to come out tonight to see what else was dropping. So. You know, I kind of went through the rest of my day I, and I never want to misrepresent what I do. I don't want you to think that like I just willy nilly get on the load board and like bippity boppity book a load. I mean, these these are I've probably spent five hours today with the load board running in the background of my life to kind of put what I put together tonight. So there is work involved with the load board. When I when I hear people say like, oh, you know, I'm not seeing any loads. I mean, my first question to them is your spot capacity coming through right here. You know how 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 long are you uh, how how long are you spending on the load board? You know what what is that looking like? That is spot capacity out of my area. Sorry about that. Um, you know how how long are you? How much time? Uh, you know I, I look at this load board as like I watch it to work smarter, not harder. Now when it's time to work, I'll work as hard as anyone. But you know I I, I kind of put these loads together like this. So I, I'm going through my whole day after after I book these at ten. I'm looking at. The whole day is like, okay, I need to be in Otai at 9.30, and that's got me tied up to about 3, 3 in the morning for these two loads. So, uh, you know, all throughout the day, I was looking for loads before, I was looking for loads after. Um, great day with the family. I mean, uh, took Lou to Petco, uh, ran over, got the kids Starbucks. There's more spot capacity coming through. I'm going to turn this into a relay rates <laughs> episode. I won't bother that anymore. Anyway, you know, get, take take Lou to Petco, take him to Starbucks, get the kids coffee and everything. Uh, got him lunch. Uh, you know, all throughout the day, kind of again keeping this thing running in the background of my life. I will say, if you're starting out with Amazon, you know, definitely pay attention, study that load board up front. But then you've got to find a way to have this thing running in the background of your life. That could be, you know, sitting there watching TV, letting it run, screen share it to a TV. You're driving somewhere with your family, have have it just running. You know, you don't have to be sitting there on the couch studying it 100% of the time you will go crazy I can't speak for you but I can tell you I almost went crazy doing that first two three weeks with Amazon my phone my nose was buried in my phone all the time like okay where's this going where's this going and there's a time and a place for that but definitely not all the time you'll go nuts so anyway I you know evening comes we take Lou for a walk had dinner everything's good and everything like that and I'm it, it's getting late enough in the night where I'm kind of thinking you know there's no way that anything's gonna drop that I can complete before I'm doing Otai at 9.30. Well, come seven o'clock, I'm standing there in my kitchen, getting the trash out, doing dishes, just kinda, you know, hanging out with the family and have this load board running over on the counter and all of a sudden the screen turns green and I walk over to it. They have a Sand 5 to Sand 3, they have it, they have it on there for like $450 a mile. Now keep in mind, it's only 0 0.6 miles. So the total payout on it was 200 bucks, but still it was like, that's a great way for me to start my night. So. I get into the truck, get down here. I think I was due at, I, I know I was due here at 8.01. I got here at like 7.50. I completed the whole load before it was even supposed to start. And that gave me another great reason to kind of get down here in Otai, get my night started and get ready for this 9.30 load, which was supposed to be my first night, or first load of the night. So keeping an eye on it and everything like that. I'm just sitting here now waiting for them to tell me my trailer's ready. I'm here early like I usually am. And uh, as soon as they tell me this trailer's ready, we're gonna head over to National City. Just got that notification on the Relay app that my trailer is ready at 108. They're getting me out of here 44 minutes after I got here and that's 30 minutes before I'm supposed to leave. Let's go hook it up, safety inspect it, and get over to National City. Okay, they want this at Dock Door 101. We are gonna put that right there. 
the thing I hate about National City is this. I will come here at night, no problem, but in order to get the trailer in there, I have to block these four lanes of traffic. Now, middle of the night, not a lot going on. Middle of the day, morning time, this is hellacious, especially for somebody who still identifies as being relatively new at trucking. The other thing you have to worry about is, it doesn't look like much, but this little bump, there's a trick to getting these trailers in here. You gotta go tandem slid all the way forward on the way in in order to clear this bump, but then they need the tandems on the, tra on the trailer slid all the way back, otherwise the trailer doesn't line up right with the dock door. I've made a video on it specifically about this location. I see enough people get stuck, myself included. It's been well over a year since I got stuck here, but I see a ton of people getting stuck at this site, worrying about sliding those tandems, getting the landing gear of the trailer hung up on this little bump. But we're going to get it in 101, and then we're going to take 102 when that light turns green. All right, got the trailer all lined up how I like it. Only thing left to do is to slide the tandems. If I pushed it back with the tandems this far forward, the problem is, is the back of this trailer would be sitting too low for them to get to it on the dock door. So I need to scoot these tires all the way to the rear. I've already pulled the little lever right there. The little things are retracted in there. I'm going to leave the trailer brake set and pull forward and these tires are going to slide to the back of the trailer. All right, two loads down, three loads to go at this point. A lot of moving parts in my night tonight. Uh, just got back from National City, dropped the trailer across the street at Sand 5, headed over to Sand 3. I'm here an hour early. It's now 11.36. I'm not due here till 12.30. I got eyes on my trailer. I see it's still at a red light, but as soon as that red light turns green, I'm going to head over to that third-party site. Here's what's changed since we last spoke. The um, They sent out spot capacity. They sent this thing out at... Which one did I respond to? 1056. They sent out spot capacity saying SAN 5 to DSDA to SAN 5. Now that's a route I run all the time. Um, another load I have booked after this third party site, I'm doing another national city. I booked that one while I was doing the relay rates. It just typically I'll take that for more, but you know, at, the, at that point of my night, it's like that would have been my fourth load, put me at like $800 very local that, that you know can't complain about that but then they sent out this sand 5 to dsd8 to sand 5 now the thing i liked about it they said 420 on this but they said eta adjustable i love it when they say that because typically on these spot things for poway i've seen this go as high as like 750 under spot capacity but if they're willing to hang on to it for me until i get done with this last dsd3 one which i have scheduled after this uh after this third party site, if they'd hold on to it for me, I'd take it for like 500. 500 is still decent money. They sent that out at 1056. I responded to it within minutes. They called me at 1110 saying, you know, they tried to get me to come down on the price. Would you do 450? I said, look, I took this for 700 last week. I think 500 is fair. And, you know, if, if they would, if they would have said like, you got to come down or, you know, make or break, I probably would have passed on it just because, you know, I, I'm content with my night being $800. But the, the good news is here is this spot capacity now still keeps me local. Yes, I'm going to Poway, but I'm going to Poway for $5.63 a mile round trip. Uh, they set that one up. So I, I sent a screenshot of the load that is my last load, the the Sand 5 to National City back to Sand 5. That one ends at 542. This next one starts at 545. So uh, basically 545, I'm gonna be heading up to Poway for $500 as a little round trip and see what all this is gonna, see what we can make this night do. I think this'll be it. But as far as, you know, next stop, I'll check in with you when I get to a third party site, just so you can see what one of those look like. So this is your average third-party site. Uh, definitely a lot less room to work with than I'm used to working with inside an Amazon yard, but you know, worth the $24 a mile they're paying me to bring this down here for. Um, I've been to this site before. This is technically considered a live unload, uh, but this site typically has you done in like 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll be taking this empty back to Sand 5. 
Um, only thing I'd add to this is if you are thinking about jumping into Amazon with a single axle truck, these sites are where you can end up with like a 45,000 pound trailer. So definitely know where to look on the load board to avoid sites like that if you go with that single axle truck. Next stop, taking this empty back to Sand 5. So this is where I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, just came back to Sand 5, dropped the trailer off from the third party site, uh, waiting for load four to start the one, the round trip to National City. And then the only one I have after this is the round trip up to uh, up to Poway DSD-8 that I got off a of spot capacity. Um, tonight, I'm glad you came along with me. I mean, this was literally like every tool in the tool belt. It's like the night started out, you know, studying that load board, seeing, you know, picking those spots, everything like that, building off of that night, and then, you know, taking full advantage of that spot capacity. You see that stuff come through? I mean, it, it kind of sprinkled with a little bit of everything for you tonight. Um, you, you know, as far as how everything breaks down, yeah, I know somebody might be thinking, well, what about your deadhead? You know, if, if we break down these loads, uh, you'll see there's virtually no deadhead in this. You know, load one was uh, the sand five to sand three, move the trailer across the street for 192. Load two was, uh, yes, I did have to deadhead back from sand three to sand five, but that's like half a mile, 0 0.6 to be exact. Uh, load two was sand five, go to National City, back to sand five for 227. Load three was, uh, I did have to deadhead from sand five to sand three, but again, half mile there. Uh, sand three, going to the third party site and then bringing the trailer to sand five, the empty one back to sand five. That was 183.97. Load four, the one I'm waiting on now, sand five to National City, back to sand five for 219. And then I'll be at sand five for that last one I got off of spot capacity. $500 to go up to Poway, starting at Sand 5, going to Poway, ending in Sand 5. So minimal deadhead. Um, yes, I did have to drive 20 miles from where I park my truck in the yard down to Otai and 20 miles back. But the way I look at it is this, you know, there's, I'm going to get the whole night done on about 22 gallons of fuel. So, I mean, you, you, could, you could kind of play around with the deadhead. You could say that the deadhead reduces the total rate. What, I'm, what I care about is those 22 gallons of fuel earned me $1,323.87. So a little bit of everything tonight. And you know, this is just what happened tonight. What's coming up in the future. I was paying attention to that spot capacity. They sent out a shuttle hostler request um, coming up here on the Tuesday, November 7th at 6 p.m. They got a shuttle hostler over at Sand 3 for 12 hours. Book that for 1200 bucks. So, you know, there's there's a lot at play here. A lot of, lot of wheels spinning as far as, like, not only what I'm doing tonight, but as far as future business. I hope this video serves you well. Sorry I kind of went over a little bit longer than I usually do, but hope this video serves you well. Appreciate you for watching. Take care.